Minocra. Everybody else get back, Bugsy? Heck yeah, we could have walked back. How'd the drop go? We had to dump ours. Piece of cake. Well, dears, I'm afraid that's all the music Sally has time for now. Shut up, you guys. Just act yourself. My condolences to the 918th bomb group. Word just came in, boys. Hey, now get this. You knocked over some trash cans in the roar today, but you missed your targets there. Nice try. Special sympathy to Colonel Joe Gallagher and the men of his famous Piccadilly Lily. I know how bitter you must feel about the secondary target they gave you for today. It's an accident she knows. Who oh, she trying to kid? Village Saint Monique on the Channel Coast. And the Frenchmen you killed were your friends, not ours. Even the women and children. What did your leaders tell you, Joe? Why did they ask you to destroy that harmless little spa? Are you sure they know what they're doing? You're not a butcher, are you, darling? Sally is sorry. Got her. Got her right in the kisser, huh? Three other Americans, and six or eight of the Maquis. Is there another tunnel down there? Only the one. The man does not look like such a tyrant. Why didn't your people report him when our patrols came through? But he held us in fear of our lives. We were afraid to ask for your help, until he was dead and his followers had run away. All but five of them. Where are they running to? Who are they? Look. How many airmen have you sent back to England? Twenty? Fifty? You have been brave and clever, but your leader is dead, and your comrades have run out on you. If you will cooperate, like this man here. Tell me the rest of the names of your group and where they are. I am infantry. The SS are coming and they are very hard to please. If I can... Tell them we cooperate. Hi, Hitler. I know some of the names. Pierre Fécamp was a leader. Fécamp. There was Lebec, Michon, Claudine, the daughter of Fécamp. Fédin Corbel was one of them. Where is she? has been a very expensive and well-guarded secret. Bomber Command would never have sent me down here if this were just another French village. They've sent maybe a hundred airmen back to us who would otherwise be languishing in prison camps. General, look, I feel worse about this thing than anybody does. But I think Bomber Command and the French are screaming too loud. Joe, it's only a crescendo. They've been yelling for weeks that we knock off bombing targets of opportunity. Sir, I wasn't bombing a target of opportunity. I was under fighter attack. I had battle damage. A malfunction in my bomb train caused by enemy cannon fire. Now, can't they publish those facts? Axis Sally loves facts. She twists them like pretzels. And don't forget, the French hear her too. All right. Why don't you reproduce a photograph like this? And this clearly shows that one bomb, and only one, hit here in the village square. The rest of them are spewed all over the countryside. And that spells accident in capital letters. And Hitler's propaganda machine will make it spell carelessness. We're supposed to be experts on precision. All right, sir. Your G2, I guess it's your problem. But I'll tell you this. If we start making apologies, it's going to sound like... like this whole San Monique thing was intentional. And I won't be saddled with that. Joe, I've got to pacify the French. I need my contacts over there. Somebody's got to be saddled with something. 
Either I recommend a change of policy or we chalk it off to a personal foul up and you take the rap. All right. I'd rather stand alone on the truth than to confess to a crime that has never been committed. Okay. I'm not even sure that your blood will placate the French. Hello? This is General Martin. Put him on. As a starter, you might study up on the history of the French guillotine. <laughs> yes, Colonel? Oh, who are they? You've got a pilot? Hub? Cofield? Oh, yes, he's one of my boys. Uh, he was shot down last Thursday. And Bing, that's B-I-N-G Pollard, 511th Fighter Squadron? S&P 51s. He's assigned to me at Hollypool. Uh, the commanding officer is with me now. Tell the pilot to contact 918th Tower and land them at Archbury. I want him for interrogation right away. Thanks. What happened to them, sir? Where are they? Cofield and Pollard. Majesty's Navy picked them up in one of those ASC rescue walruses and flying them here. They were stranded in the channel in a little boat. They were in Saint-Monique when your bombs hit. Here for a moment, please. Take him into surgery now. I want x-rays on the double. Hey, Doc, you can fix him later. Look after the boy now. Did you give the boy medication of any kind? No, I pulled some iron out of the flesh wound on his leg. Put on sulfur packs. Well, let me get him started, then I'll have you cleaned up. Now, Colonel Gallagher's on his way from Wing with General Martin, G2. I want to interrogate you right away. So you can wait here if you want to. Oh, madame. Why didn't you take the boy to a doctor over there? I was afraid that we would be arrested. Oh, I see. Well, you try to get some rest. You can use the first room beyond the foyer on your right. You can stay there. But I want to be with my son. As soon as possible, I'll send for you. Doctor. Jean-Paul will not die. The boy's badly hurt. That's all I can tell you right now, except that I'll do everything that's humanly possible. Buddy. He'll be okay. Doc Kaiser's the best there is. Is there some way to find out which airplane it was? And who was in it? Yeah, there is. I'd like to know myself. Hey, Hub! Hey, 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 hey how about me? Survivors of all play, huh? Not now, pal. <laughs> Listen, I hear we hung about 50 million party booze out to dry today. You know what? You know what? Listen, you beer hound. Now that wisecrack out of you, I'll prank you all over this face. What are you doing? What's the matter with you? What's with you? Okay, you shimmy. All right. What's well, a celebration? Sorry, sir. Fox, report to my office. I was just saying, welcome home, sir. General Martin is there. He wants to ask you some questions. Go on. It's a matter of parks. He's never acted like that. It was my bombardier. Yeah, but that's no... Your bombardier. That's right, it was my airplane. And we want to find out exactly what happened at San Monique. So let's go to my office. Cofield, you better stay here and have that taken care of. by the name of Lenoir was in charge of that. He kept the village looking innocent, insignificant. The Nazis patrolled the place, but they never actually occupied it. What happened to the other airmen who were there when the bomb hit? I don't know, sir. The boat we use is only big enough for four. 
We had to bring Claudine Corbell and a kid. Had to? Yes, sir, had to. It was her people that ran us out, the French. Scared witless. And Claudine being Pierre Ficon's daughter, she was afraid to... Well, she was afraid they'd turn her in. She was active in the underground, huh? Nurse, mother, sister. Active? Radio operator? Yes, sir, she was active. One bomb in the village square turned them against her and against us, is that it? They save us, we kill them. That's a lousy bargain, sir. Them? One man, Captain. And one kid, her father and her son. What is this, a one-family war, Captain? General, Pierre was a hero, the old-fashioned kind. He's dead. And anyone who ever worked with him is in trouble. The resistance has fallen apart. That's right. They'll run, lie, hide to save their lives, wouldn't you, sir? I've got to restore relationships with these people, Captain. I want a reliable estimate of the situation, that's all. Well, you've got mine. All right, Captain, thanks. You're both dismissed. Sir, permission to stay here tonight and return to my squadron tomorrow? No, I'd rather you report in first. You can come back later if you'd like, but uh, be in the proper uniform. Yes, sir. Pollard is a hostile son of a gun. Well, sir, as a fighter pilot, he doesn't realize all the things that can go wrong with a B-17. Also, I think he's personally involved with Claudine Corbell. Come in. Is everything all right? They won't let me see my son. I found out whose airplane it was. I know. Gallagher, the colonel. I heard you in the hallway. Oh. Has he been here to see you? Oh, he had a nurse bring me something to wear. He owes you a big apology. And some thanks for getting us out of there. I want no thanks. I needed strong arms to bring my son to safety. Now I need nothing from him. From you. Honey, you don't mean that. Every word I ever said to you, I meant. I'm here and I'll stay with you. Please, stop it. I have nothing more to give you. I'm not even sorry. I'm just empty. Please. Please go away. This vertebra, and lodge beside the sacrum. Can it be removed, Doc? Oh, yeah, in the morning. We'll give him the night to build up a little strength. But if there's extensive nerve damage, the kid's going to be paralyzed. Have you told his mother yet? No, oh, I waited to be sure. Now, let me tell her. Why? To punish yourself? Don't try to analyze me, Doc. Just let me tell her, huh? Okay, but you watch it. Maybe they learn self-discipline over there, but it scares me to see as much as she has. It's like chocolate frosting on a time bomb. He's going to be fine. I'll look out for him. He'll sleep like a kitten until morning now. He's been given sedation.
Taco Bell. I'm Colonel Gallagher. There's been a lot of things going on I think you would like to know about. Turn on the light, please. I thought perhaps if we could talk. Where do your airmen go? The men who fly with you. Will you take me there? There's something that I must decide. It will help. All right. I guess we can talk there. Wait outside, please. Yes. Turn in. Waiter. We're very hungry, so bring us whatever you have that's hot. I'll, uh, I'll have a brandy to begin with. Would you like one? Yes. Two, please. And we'll have coffee later. Where do they all live now? You see that Toby mug on the mantel there? When it's turned that way to the wall, it means that we have a mission to fly in the morning. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I'll be on a special assignment. I'll be flying with an aerial photographer. We're going to be taking pictures of San Monique. There was a uh, RAF reconnaissance flight earlier this evening. It reported quite a lot of activity in the town. I thought you would like to know that we are going to do something. Send people in there or something. Trying to make things right with your people and you. Colonel? Yes? Join you for a minute? All right, then. What is it? What are you going to do about Park, sir? Well, I'm going to arrest him tomorrow. I won't need a bombardier. Arrest or arrest, sir? I said rest. Didn't he toggle those bombs, sir? Now, listen, Captain, if you would like to discuss this later on, I'll be very happy to meet you in my... But I can demand a full investigation, you know. All I have to do, sir, is file a report with the Inspector General. Captain, you go right to my office now. You tell Major Stovall that you have my permission to read my report on San Monique. I just can't see it being written up in reports that are filed and thrown away. Now, her father's dead. Her kid may never walk again. Captain, they never move. I told you we could discuss this later on. Now, that's enough. I'm going to have a meeting with G2 in the morning. I have already invited the Inspector General. I am now ordering you to be there. Now, if you want to file your charges, you can do so then and there. Meanwhile, you are dismissed. Colonel. I said dismissed. I'm sorry. I wanted to talk to you about your son. I want you to know how very sorry I am about everything. Please pay no attention to what the captain just said. He's not qualified to make any kind of medical predictions about your boy. Colonel, I carried Jean-Paul in my arms all the way from France. Do you think I did not know? The only one that really knows is Dr. Kaiser. Now, he's not an optimist, and yet he gives your boy a chance. I could tell you what is happening in Saint-Monique. You would not have to take pictures. You 
would not have to miss the game. The game? Yes. Is it not a game you play, your men? They drink, they laugh, they sing, and in the morning they bomb, attack and destroy. A contest, a game of darts. That sounds very strange coming from a woman who's helped to save so many of them. Then shall I tell you something even more strange? For one of your men, the Nazis would have paid me 20,000 francs. And with 20,000 francs, I can buy a small headstone for the grave of Pierre, my father. Then would you let us do that for you? What is it you say? Uh, no hard feelings? C'est la guerre? No, Colonel. I am sorry, but that will not do. I told you I had something to decide. You are the leader. And no matter what you say, you will always know that the fault is yours. And it is you who must pay the price, not them. You. Now, if you excuse me, please. setting up a radar station. Are you going to protect Earth? They are going to bomb. Lenoir, the Yankees would not bomb San Monique now if the Fuhrer himself was standing here shooting red flares at them. A bit worrying. It's bad for the stomach. <laughs> Yes, sir. Well, the film should be there by now. Yes, sir, we'll have Prince to see when we meet. Where's that, sir? San Monique? Well, there's activity there. The Germans are moving in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll see you in about an hour. Joe? Oh, how's the boy? Oh, he'll do for now. Mrs. Corbell wanted to see you. Excuse me. No, uh... I wanted to know what the pictures would show, but I heard what you said on the telephone. Oh. You're going to your meeting now? Yes, I am. Where? At Wing Headquarters at Archbury. 
Ah, it is about San Monique. Yes. Well, I think that I must come with you. Well, uh, what about Jean Paul? Well, the doctor said that he would sleep most of the day. Oh, I see. All right, fine. You can join me. Um, pardon me just a minute. Yes. Oh, Harvey, I want you to call Holly Poole, check up on Captain Pollard. I want to be sure that he's going to be at that meeting. Yes, sir. All right. Watch for a few moments. All right. Where are they going? We're going out to join our bombers. The fighter cover. Are they not the Mustangs? Yes, P 51s. As a matter of fact, that's the 511 fighter squadron. They uh, fly to protect your beautiful bombers, yes? Yes. They shuttle back and forth. Right now, the P-47s are with the bombers. I have seen them, too. Earlier today, our light bombers went out to attack the German fighter bases. I'm afraid it's a pretty complex business. Like running a great American industry from a nicely furnished office. No, I wouldn't say that. It's more like fighting a dirty war. Dirty? It's a shame for you to use that word to me. You are a tourist. For you, it is a war of holidays. I think we'd better go, Claudine. We don't have time for this. You better take the time. So this is what you had to decide to do. A German killed my husband in the Maginot Line when this war began. But who is my enemy, Colonel Gallagher? The German or you? Who has hurt me the most? I can't answer that. Yes, you can. Look in my eyes. You are facing your enemy now. For my father, for my son, for all the hostages who will die in my village. I will kill you, Colonel Gallagher. Who do you think you're threatening with that? Some child? What do you want us to do? Quit because some innocent people were injured? When that bomb hit in your village, I was jeopardizing my entire crew to carry high explosives out to sea, over the channel where I thought it would be safe to drop them, where no one would be injured. But a cannon shell from a German fighter fouled up my bomb release. And so I didn't make it. But you can't blame anyone for that. It was an accident. You're 20 minutes late. My apologies, sir. Where have you been? I was with Claudine Corbell, sir. We were on our way here from the base, and suddenly I had to return her to the hospital. She broke. Doc Kaiser's been expecting it. She broke down completely. What happened, sir? 
Captain, I have my reports from the Inspector General. Now, would you like to stay here and discuss this investigation? Or would you prefer to be excused? Sir, may I be excused? All right. Your aerial photos are here. Oh? They're moving equipment into Simonique. They seem to think we won't ever bomb the town. Well, Claudine seems to think they're going to hold hostages. We've got to find out. We don't have any radio contact there, and we can't wait. We can't let the Nazis complete that installation. <sighs> What's your plan, sir? Send people in. Tonight. Yes, sir. Hostages are in buildings on the square. The headquarters of the Bosch they put in Pierre Marquette. Colonel Gallagher? Oh, hello, Joe Stan. I'm sorry to wake you up. We've got our radio contact. The CIC team is in contact with a man from Saint-Monique named Marcel Lenoir. Well, the transmission has just started. He says the Nazis are holding hostages. I want you to ask Madame Corbel about Lenoir and get right back to me. They have the names of the resistance fighters in Pierce Market. I must go, they will kill me. I make them believe I was working for them. They are gathering the names to kill them all. I must go. Gamat! 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 We send in some commandos. A commando raid? Sir, if she goes through with this, she's condemning her friends to death. People she's known all her life. We couldn't possibly stop them with ground troops. This is a bomber target, a prime one, whether we like it or not. Sooner or later, we're going to be ordered to hit it. But how can you hit one tiny little building, which is my father's market? Madame Corbell, they're making a file of evidence, a list of names of resistance people to be arrested and shot. We've got to destroy that file. Is it the file or is it the radar equipment? Both. Claudine, this message says they're both in the same place. Pierre's Market. Now, you identify that building, and I'll destroy it. Colonel, Pierre's Market is only 50 square feet. I know, but we'll use 1,000-pound bomb, delayed fuse. It'll bury itself in the ground before it goes off. And Frenchmen will die. No, we'll drop leaflets warning the people just before the bomb run. American airmen are being held there as well, Claudine. I don't know which building to mark. You don't have to do it either, Claudine. They can't make you. Captain, you're right on the ragged edge of insubordination. Pollard, I've made a lot of allowances for you these past couple of days. But you open your mouth one more time and I'm going to see to it that you're scrubbed from your outfit. Now you know us better than that.
Bomb Inc. in one minute, sir. Roger. Pilot to Bombardier. Are you ready, Jerry? Here comes Flax, Skipper. Are you ready? Sure. Skipper. Order tight. Order. Make it good, Jerry. Bomb the way. news for you, sir. Get a load of this. Well, what's the occasion? Jean-Paul, shall we play our little game again for the colonel before he flies away? Le petit jeu avec le pied. Oui. Regarde. <laughs> hey, who says you'll never walk, huh? Who says this kid's paralyzed? Get a load of that. <laughs> well, Jean-Paul, I am very glad. Il dit qu'il est très heureux. Merci. Moi aussi. The doctor said you're going to fly away. Yes, we're going to make another parachute drop. Uh, we know we got the right building, but we just want to make sure we get some more details on the results. But you again. Well, me again or somebody again. Everybody made the major mission this morning. Oh, I know. I, now I know. What does one say? Uh, good luck? You can say anything you want, I guess. Break a leg, Colonel. Thanks. You too, Parks. Jean-Paul. La plume de matin. <laughs> <laughs> 